What a great day for church. What a great day for church. You know, I appreciate those of you that had windshield wipers that showed up today. I know that there were some that were coming by horse, buggy, they weren't able to make it yet, but they'll be here. But we're just gonna have church and, you know, I can't help, and I know that it just seems a little insane. I think about every time it rains, I'm thinking, Holy Spirit, let this be representative of just what you're doing in our lives. Just rain on us. Just, just let the Holy Spirit, just let the rain of heaven fall upon us. It's so refreshing. I know sometimes people think, oh, it's all wet, they're fresh. You know, I, it's wonderful. It is wonderful. I was driving back to the house a few moments ago and I said, Lord, thank you for letting me experience this rain. Just how wonderful it is. You know what we prob problem with? We don't have a thankful heart. We don't, we don't have a thankful heart. We don't spend enough time to the Lord saying, thank you. Thank you for this day. Thank you for what I'm experiencing. All we're looking at is things we don't have or something that might be wrong and it comes out in a murmur. Did you know that? Unthankfulness comes out in a complaint, a murmur. And that was the very thing that rejected the children of Israel from entering the promised land, even though they were called to it. It was God's heart, it was God's intention. But they looked at their circumstances and they complained. They murmured, it was a sound. A murmur isn't necessarily articulated in words, it's a sound, it's a grunt, it's a uh. You know, you ever look at your circumstances and you just kind of groan at it. But thankfulness should be literally the seasoning of all of our conversation. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for being so kind to me, so good to me. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord, for your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for giving me this day. You gave me this day. What a gift. What a gift. Maybe that's why he calls it the present. It's a gift. <laughs> Have you stopped to just say, thank you, thank you, Lord, for this present, this present. <laughs> Oh, you, my friend, I'm telling you, God wants to just pour himself out into your life, but you're not gonna get there with complaining. Come on, you're gonna have to let it go. Come on, did something bad happen to you? Jesus gave a solution to that. He said, pray for them. <laughs> Think of that. Pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you. Say all manner of evil against you. Pray for them. You're praying, Lord, bless them. God, forgive them. They don't know what they do. Lord, just cause them to be lifted up today. Strengthen them. And then all of a sudden, you start giving the Lord thanks for his protection and his kindness. Would you just right now, I want everyone, the rest of you, it's not standing. I see angels not standing. Come on. The rest of you, stand up. Come on. We're going to stand up and we're going to praise and we're going to give the Lord thanks. <laughs> Bless her heart. <laughs> Father, we say thank you today for blessing us. Thank you for this wonderful, wonderful day and the privilege we have to be together here in your presence. What a gift to us. What a gift. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your gift, your love, your mercy, your kindness, your grace, your keeping power, your provision, all the things that you've done. So you've lavished upon us your kindness. And we say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Thank you, Lord, for the feeling of the anointing and the grace that is in this place. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done. Thank you for this wonderful day. And Father, we just want to celebrate and lift up our voice with thanksgiving, with praise in our hearts. In Jesus' name, and everybody say amen. Why don't you turn to somebody close to you? Squeeze them a little bit. Come on, turn and squeeze somebody. I love you. Come on, tell them. It ain't gonna hurt you. Tell them, say, I love you. This is gonna be a great day today.
shine on glory and power unto our God forever and ever. All of the honor, all of the praise is yours, yours forever. to see you guys this morning as pastor said thanks for braving the rain and coming out to worship with us you know there's nothing like getting together with other saints with other believers with our brothers and sisters coming before our father and lifting up our voices together and just whatever our, our week held just bringing it in and laying it down at his feet together and just in one voice declaring his goodness it's amazing how it shifts our hearts shifts our attitudes, just shifts, shifts our minds. So I'm so glad that you're here this morning. You recognize the importance of being together. And so Jesus, we just focus our heart on, on you and we just worship you together. Bless your name. I'm fighting a battle that you've already won. And no matter what comes my way, I will overcome. I don't know what you're doing, but I know what you've done. So I'm fighting a battle. There's a peace that outlasts darkness And hope that's in the blood There's future grace that's mine today That Jesus Christ has won So I can face tomorrow 
for tomorrow's in your hands and all I need you will provide just like you always have somebody battle that you've already won thank you Jesus no matter what comes my way I will overcome I don't know what you're doing but I know what you There's mercy in the waiting And manna for today And when it's gone I know you're not You are my hope and stay And when the sea is raging Your spirit is my help He'll fix my eyes on Jesus Christ And I'll say that it is well Oh, I know that it is well Cause I'm fighting a battle That you've already won No matter what comes I know how the story ends We will be with you again and You're my Savior, my defense No more fear in life or death I know how the story ends We will be with you again You're my Savior, my defense No more fear in life or death And I know how the story ends We will be with you again You're my Savior, my defense No more fear in life or death
give him a shout of praise this morning. He's so faithful. He's so faithful. Just like that song said, there's mercy in the waiting. Between the promise and the fulfillment, there is mercy. So Father, I pray for those in this room right now. They just need an extra measure of mercy this morning. And your mercy endures forever. And so, Father, maybe this morning what they need is more of a recognition of the mercy that already exists in that waiting. God, that they would know without a shadow of a doubt that you hold the answer, you hold the solution. And, Lord God, that the outcome will be for our good and for your glory. Right now, Holy Spirit, we just invite your presence to come and move and sweep through this place. Touch the hearts of every single person in this room. Meet them where they are, God, and speak to them as only you can. You're so welcome in this place.
that your glory would come. That your glory would come and would abide with us. Thank you that you're true to your word, that you inhabit the praises of your people. And there is nothing that calms our heart, that fills our spirit, man, that speaks to the depths of my soul like your presence. There's no one that is greater at comforting every need inside of me than you. There is nothing and no one that brings more assurance in every situation than you. When we meet with you, God, it's like everything else is stripped away. And nothing else matters except just to rest and to bask in your presence. There's nowhere else we would rather be, Jesus, than in an encounter with you. Thank you for this, this taste, just a tiny, tiny glimpse and taste of heaven. When people wonder how we could worship for a millennia in heaven, I'm thinking, you've never encountered his presence, have you? Because you don't want to leave. So Jesus, we thank you that you're in this room. We thank you that you've come and you've joined with us. Bless you in this place. Honor you, God. Let every word, every deed of this day bring you so much glory and honor. Let it be like oil poured out on your feet, Lord God. Be honored and be our most valued guest in this room. We bless you in Jesus' name. You know, this is such a holy moment. Can we just be still for just a minute? <laughs> Can we just be still for just a minute? So sweet, so precious, so holy. Just be still for just a moment.
Oh, thank you, Lord. We fail to recognize moments, precious moments. And so life slips us by and we miss the beauty of what God wanted to give us in our relationship with him. But I just feel like the Lord is just calling us just to be still for just a moment. He just wants you to unhook from all of the battles and the wounds and the scars and the disappointments that you might have faced and come to a place of healing. This is a place of healing. This is a place of restoration. So Lord, do a deep work in us. Oh, how we need you. Oh, how we trust you. <laughs> oh, how we trust you. I think that's such an appropriate song. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Alicia, is that your tone or is that mine? Sunny, the oh, I need thee. <laughs> Everybody just sing that with us one time. I need So I hear the Spirit of the Lord say, you called the right man for the job today. He said, I've come to do a deep work, and the work that I want to do is digging a deep well. But when you bring the right person to the job, but you don't give them the time to do the job, they can't get deep enough. So this morning, as we're pressing in, allow him to just open up and dig that deep, deep well. He's got a well within you that he's ready to tap. He's ready to say, now is the time for it to flow out of you. But I got to get some things out of the way first. So we can't rush this time. Let him do that deep well. You know, that's just so good. I want everybody just to, would you close your eyes with me? Just let that, just right now, just let the Lord just do a deep work in you right now. Let him do a deep work. Every hour I need thee. Oh, bless me. Oh, bless me now. My Savior, I come to. Okay, now let's pray. Father, today we offer our bodies before you, our lives before you as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. Not being conformed to this world, but being transformed by the renewing of our minds. Lord, I'm just asking right now that you would minister to our hearts and our lives and bring peace and bring love and bring strength to us. Lord, bless this house today. Father, we want you more than our agenda. We want you more than the stuff. We want to seek your face and not just your hand. So Lord, right now we bless you. 
And we're asking, Father, that your grace would be upon us, every person, in Jesus' name. And everybody say amen. Oh, would you just turn to somebody and just love on them for just a moment. Just tell them, say, I really do love you. years old, but she'd been playing music and traveling with evangelists starting from the age of 10. And I remember um, there were so many memories that come back when you hear those songs. And I thought, just like the song itself, when life gets troubling, I go back to where I met Jesus. And that was at that pool, that pool called Irvin and my Aunt Vera and my mom and the things they taught me at that young age of how to how to truly be healed by Jesus. And so that's what the songs changed now, the way, and so I'm glad they've hipped it up a little bit, jazzed it up a little bit, even though I don't know how to sing it other than the way my mom taught me. But um, still, it still brings back those feelings and those memories. Aleph put a little jazz to it. <laughs> Only if you do this at the end. <laughs> It's the first time, and I still don't have any breath, but I'm going to do my best. <laughs> but there's a day healing waters when the angels trouble the calm. Then came, came Jesus, Jesus 
Wonderful, wonderful. Thank the Lord. Oh, thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. <laughs> Isn't God good? Chris had longer hair than me in that picture. He inspired me and then he abandoned me. Oh, thank you for being here today. This is gonna be a special time. I feel like the Lord's given me a word for you today. I promise not to take too long with it, but I feel like it's a word from the Lord that will bless you. Before we do that though, I would like for everyone just to prepare your tithing, your offering. We're gonna to minister to the Lord. Now we've got electronic giving in the back. Now we've tried to change our system a little bit. We're trying to make it better. And I'm needing your patience just to help us get through it. Uh, sometimes change is difficult. The only thing that didn't like change was the thing that became a fossil. And so sometimes change is necessary and we're trying to be better. How many of you remember the first time you ever used a computer? Do you remember that? Do you remember the learning curve that you had? I mean, you've got that, you got that three, I started to say gigabytes, but they didn't even know what that word meant in those days. <laughs> some kind of ram, but it was hard sometimes to make that change. Well, we're learning and we're going to be better and we're going to be more efficient from our church. But so be patient with us and you can help us in that area. But I want you this morning to prepare your tithing, your offering. We're going to bless the Lord. Why don't you just close your eyes with me for just one moment. Take just a moment. The Bible said in Deuteronomy 26, when you tithe, he said, Give thanks for every good thing that the Lord has given to you. That's kind of the method that is used for tithing, for offering. And so I just want you, would you just take just one moment and just think of one thing that God's done for you? Is there, is there one thing that you can turn to the Lord and say, Lord, thank you. Lord, thank you. Your family, whatever the case is, your job, your health, a miracle, God delivered you. God did something for you and you said, that was the Lord. You say, thank you. Lord, this morning as we bring our tithing, our offering, as this is our celebrations, our worship to you. And we just want to say thank you for blessing our families. Today, Lord, we give you praise and we honor you, Lord. We honor you and we declare your blessings to be on this house in Jesus' name. Amen. If you need an envelope, they'll make sure that you have one. I'm going to ask our ushers to come. We've got electronic giving in the back, or if you want to give on the phone app, you can do that. But let's everybody stand this morning. Let's just come and let's just honor the Lord. Let's honor the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Fathers, with a grateful heart today that we lift up the first fruit of our increase and we declare that you're our source. We wouldn't have anything without you. We don't want anything without you. You are the treasure of our life in every aspect. You alone are the treasure of our heart. And I just want to say thank you for blessing our families and honoring them and making ways for them that they didn't see how. Bless them, I pray. Let this be a day, Lord, of blessing upon this family. I just declare as a pastor, I declare favor, opportunities. Lord, I'm asking the windows of heaven be open and you would pour out more opportunities than they can contain. And I ask it in Jesus' name. And everybody say amen. Thank you, guys. Why don't everyone stand with me for just a moment? Will you make the declaration, he is the king of my heart. 
He's the king of my heart. Some people want him to be Lord over a few things. But when you come to the place that you say, you know, he's the Lord of all. He is the Lord of all. He's the king of my life. He's the king of my heart. And all that I am and all that I do, I submit to him. And I declare his beauty and his goodness. We're just going to bring the lights down a little bit. And the whole reason for this is because what I'm wanting to do is just have an opportunity for you just to just to kind of shut everything out. I would like for you just to kind of detach from what's around you and focus on him for just a moment. Just say this to the Lord. Just say, you are the king of my heart. You're the king of my heart. You're the king of my life. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from, oh, he is my son. Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for
You're good in everything that you do. <laughs> you're good in everything that you've done and everything that you're going to do. We honor you, Jesus. Can't go back to the beginning I can't control what tomorrow will bring But I know here in the middle Is the place where you promise to be Not enough unless you come. Will you meet me here again? Because all I want is all you are. Will you meet?
Will you meet me here again? Cause all I want is all you are. Will you meet me here again?
of my heart more than that and as I'm standing up here I'm just having a whole new rededication moment I don't want anything but him all of my needs are fulfilled in him Can you just abandon all of your trust in other things? <laughs> That's where we really get sideways. Our trust in things and people and circumstances. That's why deceitfulness, the deceitfulness of riches is what the Bible talks about. It's because you think they're your source. <laughs> and that's so fleeting. My trust is in him. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lead not your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And he'll direct your path. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. You can have all this world. Would you say that to the Lord right now just as a prayer? Just say that. I want you just to read that with me. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. You can have it all. You can have all this world. You can have all the world. Oh, I want him. <laughs> I want him. <laughs> oh, how I trust him. My precious, precious Lord. Oh, how I love him.
Lord, I just give you my all today. Would you just do that right now? Things maybe you've been holding on to, would you just let it go? Just let it go. Lord, I put all my trust in you right now. Would you say that to the Lord? Let that be your prayer right now. I give it all to you. I want you more than I want this world. I want you, Lord. Lord, I'm asking that you would fill our hearts with an understanding of your glory and your presence. We not chase, spend our life chasing things, but our treasure, our true treasure is you. Oh, that we might know you. I want to know you. <laughs> I want to know you in your suffering. I want to know you and your triumphant glory. Bless this house, I pray, with your glory. In Jesus' name. Can everybody say amen? Oh, once again, if you're close to somebody, just turn to them and say, I love you. Would you? The Bible says we know we pass from death to life because we love the brethren. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I want to say thank you so much to our music, our worship ministry in this place. Um, the labor that they go through. This is their worship. This is their worship. They're not just people that we found off this. This is, this is people who love this church and who love God and they worship in this. And the excellence, excellence. Somebody say, you sing a lot. Well, you've not seen anything yet. That's what we are. We're, we're worshipers. And we will spend our life on one level or another, singing or humming or tapping our foot or something, giving praise to the Lord. I'm going to read from Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. This is out of the New King James. Now the Lord said unto Abraham, get thee out of thy country from your family and your father's house. That's pretty plain, isn't it? You think there's anybody that maybe wouldn't understand that? This is what the Lord comes to you today and he says, I want you to get out of your country, get away from your family and your father's house. Now, what would your father's house be? Well, that would be pretty much everybody that was connected to your father's house. Amen. You don't need a theologian to try to explain that to you. And he said, to a land that I will show you. And he said, I'm going to make you a great nation. This is what God said to him. I'm going to make you a great nation. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make your name great. And you shall be a blessing quickly the blessing of Abraham wasn't just you're going to get a blessing, but you're going to be a blessing. We have to understand that. I will bless those, verse 3, who bless you and curse those who curse you. Uh, this isn't my message here, but i got to pause for a second. This is why a lot of people have got their backside in a sling and they can't get out. God spoke a blessing over Abraham and his seed. Galatians 3.29 says, if you belong to Christ, you're Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. The promise of God to his people was, if somebody blesses you, I'm gonna bless them. If they curse you, they fall under a curse. And it isn't like God's going around looking for someone. The curse was put on those who put their hands against those that are blessed. We need to be quick to hear slow to speak and slow to rest because we say things that curse people that God has blessed and thereby bring a curse on ourselves. And that's why a lot of people can't get healed. They can't get delivered. They can't get anything because they have violated that covenant right there. There's a whole lot needs to be said about that, but I'm not going there. I'm going to bless those that bless you, and I'm going to curse those that curse you. And in you shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Okay, 
That was what God said to Abram. Now, look at what it said in verse four. And Abram departed as the Lord spoke unto him. Now look at this, look at this. And Lot went with him. Now that's his nephew, okay? Lot went with him. What was Abraham thinking? Abraham arose to go do what God said and Lot tagged along with him. And now Abraham was 75 years old when he departed out of Haran. Now, Genesis chapter 13, verse one. Let's read this. Are you ready? Verse 13. And chapter 13, verse one, I'm sorry. And when Abraham went up from Egypt, he and his wife and all that he had and Lot with him. To the south. Isn't it amazing they just keep bringing this up? Abraham was very rich in livestock and silver and in gold. He went up to his country from the south, from Bethel, to the place where his tent had been at the beginning, between Bethel and Ai. <coughs> to the place of the altar which he had made at the first. And there Abraham called upon the name of the Lord. Verse 5. Lot also who went with Abraham, had flocks, herds, and tents. You don't know why? Because he was around Abraham. You carry a blessing on your life, and there's a lot of people that are going to be drawn to you, and they're going to be blessed simply because they're in your proximity. Well, it is the truth. So Lot also went with him. He had flocks, herds, tents. Now the land was not able to support them that they might dwell together, for their possessions were so great and could not dwell together. Look at this. <coughs> and, verse seven, there was strife between the herdsmen of Abram's livestock and the herdsmen of Lot's livestock. Sheesh. There's your sign. And the Canaanites and the Perizzites then dwelled in the land. So Abraham, verse eight, said to Lot, please, let there be no strife between you and me, between my herdsmen and your herdsmen, for we're brethren, even though you were supposed to be left way back there and not be with me, but here you are, so we're brethren. The Bible says, if it's possible, live at peace with all men. Well, anyway. So, verse nine, is not the whole land before you? Please separate yourself from me. If you take the left, I'm gonna go to the right. You know what he was saying? You're not my source, God's my source. I don't care, you throw me in a hole in the middle of the desert, God's gonna cause it to flourish because I'm in covenant with him. You choose the best, I don't care, God's gonna bless what I have with you or without you, that doesn't mean anything. So he said, you go to the left, I'll go to the right. If you go to the right, I'll go to the left. And Lot, of course, now this is the nature of this problem right here. Because people that attach themselves like this, they're always going to be looking out for themselves. You got to know it's a fact, guys. And Lot lifted up his eyes and saw the plains of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere before the Lord had destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, like the garden of the Lord. Wow, that must have been amazing. Like the land of Egypt as you go towards Zoar. Then Lot chose for himself all the plain of Jordan and, and Lot journeyed east. They separated from each other. Abraham dwelt in the land of Canaan and Lot dwelt in the cities and, and of the plain and pitched his tent as far as Sodom, even as far as Sodom. But the men of Sodom were exceedingly wicked and sinful against the Lord. And the Lord said to Abraham, now look at this, after he separated from him, after Lot separated from Abram, now God says to him, all right, sheesh, we finally got this thing cleared up. Now, lift up your eyes and look from the place you are, northward, southward, eastward, and westward. See, it's just interesting how Lot was mentioned here as he was. But who invited him? Who invited Lot? Things and people that attach to you that eventually affect you in a very negative way. That's just a reality, guys. 
It just is. And we see the story very clear here. Things start going well, and then what happens? Lot shows up. God starts blessing you, Lot shows up. And look at this. Well, chapter 12, 13 through 20 says Abraham broke out in compromise. We won't get into that, but that affected him in a very negative way. Chapter 13, verse seven, they broke out in strife. I mean, things begin to happen. So when he separated from Lot, suddenly then the atmosphere changed. The Bible says, cast out the scorner and strife and contention will cease. The room, the color of the room changes when you cast out the scorner, so to speak. The person, the person who might be represented here as Lot. Because then God said to him, now lift up your eyes. Lot represented, represented something that I wanted to share with you for just a couple of moments because that's dealing with people, ideas, methods, things that we allow into our life that causes us to begin to flourish. When God wants to bless you, he sends someone into your life. When Satan wants to curse you, he sends someone into your life. But the movement in your life is affected by the people that you're around. Paul made the statement later. He said, don't be deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. What happens in your life can greatly be affected by the people that you're allowing into your life because you grab hold of things and you won't let it go. And it's hard to let it go. You know, I'd heard the, the, the story of the man in Africa, how he would catch monkeys. And what he would do is, is he would put peanuts in this hole or in this jar and that silly monkey will go and he'll stick his hand in the jar and grab hold of it. And he made the fist by having so much in his hand and he couldn't pull his hand out. And so the monkey is standing there with a fist full of peanuts. He can't get his hand out of the jar and he is screaming like a mash cat. I'm telling you, he wants out of there so bad, but he won't let go of the peanuts. Now, what was interesting, and, and I jotted this down for you because I want to get you, of letting go of things, old perceptions, uh, the, the monkey was never trapped. The monkey was never trapped. He just had to let go of the peanuts. Sometimes in your life, there are things and people that you have to let go before you can walk in blessing. Because as long as it's present, it will break out in strife. See, you can tell when things, there, there are things that manifest in life in different things. You can see it in different people. Now, and, and I'm not, listen, I am not, uh, I believe we need to squeeze everybody that moves. I think we ought to love people unconditionally. But you got to know who your traveling companion is. Because their baggage becomes your baggage. And the strife they carry, the division they carry. And all you got to do is listen to them a couple of moments. What are they saying? How negative is it toward this person, that person? Do they have any of this? Because the Bible clearly told us, he said, don't say anything unless it ministers grace to the hearer because it grieves the Holy Spirit. And so all you got to do is listen. And when people have something negative, well, they got a criticism about that one. They got a criticism about that. Uh, I don't know that that really is worth having over there. You know, and people will get to where they scoff churches. They're, they're called scoffers. This is what Jesus dealt with whenever he was going to raise Jairus' daughter from the dead. They, they were once mourning and groaning. And the moment he said she's not dead, he, they, they laughed him to scorn. They were scorners. They were mockers all the time around that dead scenario. And you know what Jesus said? He said, put them out. Get rid of them. There's something about people, and I know this is kind of heavy, guys. Please just bear with me for a moment. But there are things that people carry that can affect your life in a very positive way. And you've got to hear from the Lord who he wants within your circle. 
That's the truth. Now, I'm not talking about, uh, again, and if you think I'm saying not be nice to people, kind to people, serve them, love them, help them, pour out yourself for them, that's not what I'm saying. But there are times when we allow things to come into our life that affect us in the same way that Lot affected, affected Abram. Now, listen to, what, listen to what this said. I thought this was very interesting. When Saul, King Saul, was plotting against David, this is what he said. This is 1 Samuel 18, 21. Michael and David, listen, it said, So Saul said, I will give her to him that she may be a snare to him. Now, that's interesting, isn't it? She was a... <laughs> appointment. We call them divine appointments and divine contacts. She was specifically assigned in Paul's mind to be a snare that the hand of the Philistines may be against him. Therefore, Paul said to David a second time, you shall be my son-in-law. Oh, I'm going to brag on you. And sometimes people will brag and they'll tell you all the things. I mean, you are the greatest things. I mean, I've had people come up and say, boy, you are, you are all of that and a bag of chips. And, and I'm thinking, I don't trust you. <laughs> Have you ever had that feeling? And, and I'm not, again, I'm not talking about being critical, but we got to judge when, when Lot comes into our life. How is that affecting us and what is that doing? So she was an assignment against him. Do you remember when Jesus was talking, he said, the tares were sown among the wheat. Well, what was it that was destroying the wheat? It was affecting the growth of the wheat. And they said, do you think we should go and take the tares out? And he said, here's a problem. If you take the tares out, a lot of times you tear the wheat out. Our roots many times become entwined together. You know, you can have somebody that's not even good for you, but your roots get entwined together and you can't pull them out without affecting everybody that their roots are connected to. I think Allison last week spoke about our roots being, I, I, need, to, I need to see that. She explained a little bit to me before, before she spoke it. But our root systems grow together. That's the problem. When you allow yourself to be connected to people that are toxic, your root systems grow together. You become connected. And you can't, it's like in this church, there's been times when people have come in here, I've, and I've seen people come in and they would talk bad about that. They would tend every Sunday. And they just talk so bad about the church. And I'm thinking, well, I can't tell you what I'm thinking, but I'm thinking something. <laughs> I'm thinking, number one, why would you do that? Why would you do that? I could go to them and say, you need to go someplace else. But the fact is, there are people whose root systems have been connected to them. And, and the problem is that people have allowed that. Now, listen, we're going to use it for church, but some of you see that same problem in business, places that you work. You have scorners come in. They've always got to complain about their boss, always to complain about, about their wages. Well, I didn't like this. I, it could be a perfect day, and they've got a complaint. See, the complaint is the fruit of the heart. There's something in their heart that's not right. And you have to understand that what they're doing affects you. It affected Abram. It affected him. It limited him. It caused problems in Abram that Abram literally was at a point where, where well, he, he got one time got caught up in compromise, but then he also got caught up in other things. It affected him. It hurt him. So you have to understand that people affect you. The, your spirit, I don't know whether you know it or not, but your spirit is prevailing. Yes. You can affect a room when you walk into it, and sometimes you can affect a room when you walk out of it. Yes. I've seen people walk out before, and the whole place would light up. Yes. But you can feel it. Now, come on, have you ever been in a place where you was in a room or relationship or connection with some people, and they were just mad? They... They weighed a thousand pounds, and you can feel it. You you can feel it. There's been times when when people would come and fold their arms and 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 have attitudes, and it's even hard to worship in that atmosphere. It's difficult because they affect you. Affect more than you think. You bring color. 
to the room. You, you can change the color. Do you know what a great responsibility that is on us? We have the ability to walk into a place that's broken down or hurt or wounded. We have, a, we have an ability that when somebody has lost everything to walk into the room and suddenly change the color from darkness to light. There's been times when I've seen, I've stood by deathbeds of people and, and you just, you know, they're, they're weeping and they're crying and you know there's a heaviness, but you walk in the room and suddenly the atmosphere changes. You, you are so powerful in what you give. So don't let your good be used for evil. Don't, don't let it, don't let it be, don't, don't ever allow yourself well, again, that scripture, uh, don't say anything except it ministers grace to the hearers. Wow, that's going to shut us up, isn't it? But the next verse says, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. So when we say things that are contrary to love, it grieves the Spirit. It affects the Spirit. That's why he said, don't let any polluting conversation come out of your mouth. Nothing that's polluting. Don't, if you don't have something good to say, just don't say it. Learn the vocabulary of silence. And I'm just going to tell you something. Sometimes it's easier to cut your arm off than to not say it when you feel like it needs to be said. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? Have you ever just had, and you've got a good heart, but something needs to be said here. I mean, and it can, it can be the gossip chain. It's like it's got gravity to it and you can't get away from it. But I'm telling you something, you will discern those that have the Spirit of God and those who are being used by something else by what they bring to the table. Who speaks into your ear during times of change, during times of need? There's real quickly, I got to give you this scripture here. Mark chapter 9, 5 and 19. And I will hurry this up. You know, Jesus cast the devil out of that man, Legion. You know what he said to him? He said, go home. The guy said, I'm going with you. Jesus said, no, go home. Go home to all of those people who had told me to leave because they were just scared. That's all it was. They were just frightened. They had never seen anything like that. Jesus said, go home and tell them the good things that God's done for you. But go down, if you look at down in chapter, or Mark chapter Eight and verse 23, let me just read this to you, okay? Now look at this, you ready? 8.23, he says, then cometh he to Bethsaida. Everybody say Bethsaida. And they bring him a blind man to him and besought him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the city. Isn't that weird? Jesus says, I'm gonna pray for you, but I ain't praying for you here. So he took him by the hand and led him out of the city, out of the town. And when he spit on his eyes, he put his hands on him and asked if he saw aught. And he said, well, I see men as trees walking. Now, this is interesting to me. What that denotes is the fact that this man is having to be worked through a deliverance, so to speak. There's something very deeply ingrained in him, and sometimes it doesn't just... Boom, happened like that. Jesus prayed for him. Now, let me just tell you something. My opinion, I think Jesus is pretty good at it. If I'm gonna be prayed for by anybody, I'd like for it to be Jesus. I don't care. He can spit on the ground. He can spit on my, I don't care, man. He just spit all over me. And, and, but when Jesus did that, he said, tell me how you're, how you're doing. He said, well, I, I see men as trees walking. Okay. And then after he put his hands home again, he made him look up and he was restored, holds the other. Now, verse 26, hear this, here's the key right here. And he sent him away to his house saying, go neither to the town nor tell it to anybody in the town. Now, isn't it interesting? Because the guy before, he said, go back to your town, tell them what God's done for you. Here, he led him by the hand out of Bethsaida and said, hey, don't go back there. And don't even tell anybody what I did for you from there. Don't even have a conversation with them. So that city was Bethsaida. And Jesus had previously said concerning Bethsaida, woe unto thee, Bethsaida. For if the mighty works had been done in you, or in Sodom, 
and Gomorrah that were done in you, they would have repented for long ago in sackcloth and ashes. Bethsaida was a city of scoffers. Matthew eleven twenty one, 21. They began to upbraid the cities wherein most of his mighty works were done because they repented not. Woe unto thee, Chorazin. Woe unto thee, Bethsaida. For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, it would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. So I want you to understand that the environment of Bethsaida was toxic. Those people had, they, they saw all kinds of miracles. Yeah, I've seen that before. Pfft, yeah, whatever. You know, blinded eye open, eh, whatever. You know, they were scoffers. They were scoffers. They saw all the mighty works and yet they were completely unmoved, unimpressed. And Jesus said, hey, you want a miracle? Number one, <laughs> let me take you by the hand and get you out of this environment. Come on, somebody. And don't go back. As a matter of fact, if you run into them, <coughs> move on, them. don't talk to them. That is a life lesson, guys. Listen to me. This story concerning Abram, this story concerning Bethsaida, this is a life lesson. Now, it's very possible that Lot represented security to Abraham. Sometimes I don't want to go where I don't know unless I have somebody familiar around. That's not what God said. And Lot attached himself, even if he was a security blanket. Now, there's a lot of people that hold on to bad people because they're codependent. There you are. They're so codependent. But God wants to say to you, listen, separate from things that are toxic. And how do I measure toxic? By what they say. By what they say. I'm not going to be a grumbler. If I can find some good in somebody, I'm going to try to say it. There's a lot of bad things that you can say about everybody. But why would you do that? I was in a conversation just the other day and something came to mind as I was in conversation about someone and I wanted so bad to tell a story, but my thought was, what light is that gonna put them in? Because it was negative story. It, it was. And my thought was, number one, what's the fruit of this? And am I just trying to leave that person in a worse light than me? Am I so insecure that I have to have, that I, you look bad to make me look good? They used to call that small man syndrome. That's a condition of the heart. You gotta prove something. Am I being too plain here? It's his fault. I've hung around McCorkle long enough that I just say things. <laughs> I forgot what I was just gonna say, it doesn't matter. Okay, can I give you one more scripture and then we'll pray. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 26. The righteous man should choose his friends carefully for the way of the wicked leads them astray. So, again, this is a life lesson, guys. Number one, you have to make the decision to be the right person. You've got to make the decision. I want to say it, but I'm not saying that. I refuse to leave somebody else looking horrible. I'm not going to do it. They'll, they'll take care of that on their own. I'm not going to be a part of that. One of these days, I'm going to stand in judgment before God, and I'm going to give account of everything that I've done in this body. And the words that I speak are essential. So I want you to realize how important it is that I'm going to be the right person. Secondly, 
There are people maybe around you that are like that, that sometimes just needs a good rebuke from a brother. There's nothing wrong with you saying, what the heck are you doing? Can you say heck in church? I can say hell, but I just can't put it in those contexts. Rebuke them. Hey, we don't talk about people like that. We're better than that. We're better than that. And if your brother repents, perfect. Hang out with him. But when you see a thread that runs through their life where they leave behind them a trail of dead and wounded, you don't need to be a part of that. Amen. Because God has a covenant for you and God wants to say to you, lift up your eyes. All that you see, I'm gonna give you for an inheritance. Wow. I don't want anything hindering that. I don't need anything hindering that. So right now, would you just close your eyes with me for just one moment? And I want you to think about in your life right now, who speaks into your ear? (sighs) Who do you listen to? when you need counsel, when you're going through difficulties, when you're going through crisis, when you're having to make decisions, who's talking into your ear? Who's that inner circle for you? Do they, are they iron that sharpens iron? Do they make you better? Are you better because you're connected to them? You should be. It should be every time you get around them, you think, man, I feel better. I feel good. Who, who are those people? And if you don't have those people, then you need to find them. You need to find some, find someone who's better than you at what you do. Find someone who's sharper than you and allow yourself to hook up with them and celebrate them. And if you'll learn to celebrate them, you'll find that your life will begin to take on an environment that is incredible. In Jesus' name, amen. Does everybody still love me? Now, I didn't cuss in church. (laughs) What do you think, Dennis? (laughs) Are we good? (laughs) I want to do something before we dismiss. Come on. Wyatt, I'm hanging on. What? I don't know about y'all, but the thought that Pastor Jerry's not going to grumble anymore sure sounds like a victory. The Lord is at work. Yes. Okay, so the kids are coming in, so don't be distracted by them. But um, we're going to go ahead. We're going to do. We're going to do a couple of family things this morning before we dismiss while the worship team's coming. One thing, I do have a message for all of you. Amen. Early voting is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of this week, and voting um, election day is on Saturday. If you don't know who to vote for, please come talk to me because I have strong opinions about a lot of this, and I'd love to tell you what to do. And uh, there is a bond election. (laughs) There is a bond election on the ballot that is very important. I know that everybody's like, ugh, but it is important. If you know me at all, you know I'm super cheap and frugal and I'm never advocating for spending money. We need some money. Our school district needs some money. So please vote. In order for people to serve they have to get elected. It's not just enough to say that you support something. If you don't show up and vote, somebody else might, and then it doesn't happen the way it needs to happen. So please take the time and effort, which is minimal, okay, to go out and vote. Okay, and then this morning, we have the opportunity to celebrate as a family something important. Wyatt, where are you, dear? 
Okay, Wyatt, come on up here. And Wyatt's family, whoever all is going to come with Wyatt's family. Um, Kathy, Shane? Yeah, I, I had him. He's where? Oh, I had him bring the kids in so he could be. Able. Okay. If you are a fan, or no, I mean a family member, we're all fans of Wyatt. So Proverbs tells us that the steps of a righteous man are ordered of the Lord, Wyatt. And we believe that to be true for you. And as he's, he is having a big life moment, and he wanted to share it with you all. And in doing so, we're going to make a commitment to him as a church family to pray for him and to support him and to cheer him on. He is signing his commitment papers this morning to play football and attend Texas Lutheran University, which is a big deal. And we're super proud of you. And the only way we're on board with it is that it's close enough that he can drive home and come to church often. <laughs> so um, I guess let's do this. Yep. Oh, let's, you, you yeah. This is something that was very special because there's a lot of places that he could do this and he wanted to do it with his church family. And for him to sign commitment papers to a college, that's a big deal. And let me just tell you something, he's amazing. I'm telling you, Wyatt is amazing. The hand of God is on him and Wyatt is gonna be used very strongly in ministry. I, I know he's gonna to go to college for football, but he's, he's gonna be going in the ministry too. And I love and appreciate him and his entire family. Uh, this is a good family. So anyway, how, how we do this, dear? He's going to make me good. I have a core thing. Where to sign before he gets to college. Quit talking. So, pray, over him. I, I pray over him real quick and then he'll sign. Okay, hold on. Don't sign yet. Wait a minute. Would everybody just reach your hand this way? Father, we are grateful today. I'm very grateful that uh, you let me know Wyatt. You brought me into his life and, and you brought him into my life and I feel very honored over that. And Father, I cover him and I bless him. And as our church family worship center, Lord, he's, he's chosen to share this moment with our church and we we celebrate this. I pray for protection over his body. Lord, that's a rough sport. I'm asking God that you would keep him, but more than anything, I pray that he would influence and he would not be influenced. I pray that he would realize that he is Abram and that the covenant of God and the hand of God is upon him. And he's going into a country that he doesn't even know yet, but it's by the covenant of God and God is going to multiply him and strengthen him and God is going to bless him. So Lord, today, as he signs his commitment papers, Lord, we as a family, we bless him and we just pray that the spirit of God, that the angels of the Lord go before him, keep him and preserve him in all that he is and all that he does. And we do it in Jesus' name, amen. Go ahead, young man. Now we have to start learning how to say, go Bulldogs. <laughs> that won't be hard for you guys that go to McDade, will it? You're already saying that. <laughs> Ooh, sorry. Congratulations. <laughs> Okay, you gonna sing us out? Somebody gonna sing us out? Anybody? Wyatt, go ahead and sing us out. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Curtis, yes, sir. Sorry, don't go on Wednesday. Tuesday. Monday, Tuesday, early voting. Election day, Saturday. Yeah? Okay, well, nobody's going to sing, so I guess we're going to be dismissed. <laughs> Y'all have a great day. Ex